Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome you back again to another edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection. And we've been working our way through 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, or excuse me, chapter 1, verses 2 to 10. And we've been focusing on this miracle of conversion. And what the Apostle Paul is doing at the opening of his letter is he's talking about how, as he thinks about the church at Thessalonica, and he thinks about their salvation, he thinks about how God worked in their heart, how he's continuing to work in their heart, how he's working through them. All of these things are things that, that bring him tremendous joy, tremendous encouragement. And, and frankly, what he's ultimately saying is that when I reflect on the miracle of salvation in the lives of people, what it does in them and through them and to them, he says, I just cannot help but be encouraged in spite of all the mess that's out there. And so that really is the sense of what this series of studies is all about. It's about encouraging us. People are getting saved in this county, in our church, in our communities, all around the world. People are coming to faith in Christ. They're placing their faith in his finished work. And when we are the ones who are involved in reaching them with the gospel, or we have the opportunity to talk to someone who's a brand new Christian, hear their stories, that's something that should bring us tremendous joy and should really stir up our hearts and get us passionate about the gospel. And so that's really the sense of what we're doing this week. So again, we're looking at verses six through eight. Um, I know that the, the section is two to 10, but I want us to zero in on six to eight today as we look at how we can find significance and how it implants us in this amazing story of how God's working in the world. Here's what it says, verse number six. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to Godward is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. To me, this is one of the most amazing statements in the whole passage of Scripture. He says that you followed us you received the word in affliction, and then you became examples. And you became examples to such an extent that we don't even need to come into this region and preach the gospel because you have so thoroughly done it, we can go to other regions and focus our attention in those places. What that tells you is that when the, the gospel really grips a person's heart and they're saved from their sin, and they're new creatures in Christ. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit's beginning to work in their life in so many different areas. And they begin to develop a burden for other people around them. They start caring about family members who are unsaved and relatives uh, who, who maybe they haven't talked to in years, but now they're concerned about their soul. People that they work with, their neighbors, their, their friends, their coworkers, all these people. They start developing this burden and they want to talk about the gospel that they've experienced its power in saving them. Well, that's what's going on here. And what it shows you is that God took these people who formerly knew nothing about Christ, nothing about the gospel, they were stumbling in the darkness, and through the Apostle Paul coming and just spending three weeks in Thessalonica, these people's lives were crypt by the gospel, and it's like they were implanted in this story. The story is what God is doing in the world from creation to the day that he returns to take his church to be with him. From, from day one till that day in the future, whenever that is, God takes people and he saves them and he plants them in that story. And all of a sudden, they begin to become tools in the hands of the Lord being used to reach in the lives of other people. That story starts with the Savior. Reminds me of Galatians chapter four, verse four. It says, in the fullness of the time, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. God starts the story by sending a savior. And Christ goes to the cross and he dies for our sins and he rises triumphant from the, from the grave and through his death, burial, and resurrection and his righteousness that can be imputed to us, the Lord Jesus Christ starts the story. 
then we see that this Savior sent out witnesses right before his ascension. And he tells his disciples to go and to preach the gospel to every creature and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and to teach them all things that he's commanded them. And so that reminds me again of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, a passage that we've dealt with this month. In verse 6 it says that God commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and he hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He literally saved us, not just to deliver us from eternal destruction. Of course he did that, but it was also so that he could channel the gospel's message through us to other people. He wanted us to be tools that he uses to reach into the lives of others, a part of this story. And then we see that these people who are involved in the Lord's work, sometimes they suffer immensely for that work. And Paul even mentions this in verse number six. He says that you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy in the Holy Ghost. Paul says, when I was at Thessalonica and I proclaimed the gospel, I was persecuted. Paul says this in many other places because that was his experience. But what happens is as people endure the difficulty of persecution, that endurance and that faithfulness demonstrates part of the powerful effect that the gospel has on people's lives. And through people hearing the message and observing how it's changed people and how they endure in spite of hardships, others receive these witnesses and then they become passionate witnesses themselves in the place of these other people. And that's what he says in verse 7. He says, ye were examples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad, so that we need not to speak anything. Do you see how this story is developing? It starts with a savior who sends out witnesses, who endure hardship, who reach people with the gospel, who ultimately will replace those initial witnesses and they'll expand exponentially the work that they initially did. And then this story will repeat itself in every people group from generation to generation until the day that Christ returns. And we see this foreshadowed in Matthew 28 verse 20, because Jesus says, I'm with you all way, even unto the end of the world. That means that when the apostles are gone, and those who heard the word through them are gone, and the next generation is gone, and the next generation is gone, God will continue to be with that generation that is proclaiming the gospel. He's gonna work through them, and this continues all the way till the end of time when he says, all right, my program is done. The last soul who's going to be saved has been saved, and now we're going to enter into, we could say, our eternal state. Revelation 5, 9, he says, Thou hast redeemed us to God by, every, out of, uh, uh, by thy blood, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign in the earth. I want to remind you that when God saved you, he didn't just save you from the consequences of sin. He saved you to walk in newness of life. And he planted you in some piece of this story he's writing in this work that he's doing. We find ourselves in the midst of God's desire and his purpose and his work to reach the nations from one generation to the next until the day he returns. I don't know about you, but that's pretty exciting, isn't it? Isn't it awesome to think about the fact that when God saves us, he plants us into this story and this work that he's doing? This thing called conversion, a person placing their faith in Christ and old things passing away and all things becoming new, becoming a new creature in Christ, this is a miracle and it's something worth delighting in. I hope that gives you something to delight in this morning. Have a blessed morning and Lord willing, we'll continue our series tomorrow. Bye now.